Hey, 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 what is up, people? About a couple weeks ago, I did a video about this power supply that came out of a uh, Dell Optiplex uh, 790, and this power supply had failed. It turned out that it had uh, several bad capacitors inside, and so I kind of investigated to see if it could uh, be made to uh, work again by replacing some components. And the good news was that, yes, uh, this power supply can definitely work again if we were to replace the capacitors and the fuse. Well, towards the end of the video, I was kind of undecided on whether or not I wanted to replace the caps or if I just wanted to get like a completely um, new, you know, power supply and just replace this one. And so, yeah, I was undecided. And then I realized, ¿Por qué no los dos? So, yeah, I can just get the uh, capacitors to fix this power supply. And in the meantime, just replace it with a uh, somewhat uh, inexpensive one that I bought on eBay, which is this one right here. And that way I can uh, have one working. And in case something happens, I have a, a backup supply that I can replace it with later. And, you know, if it, this one here goes bad or whatever, you know, I can check it and see if I can re repair it. And, you know, that way I, I can kind of do that because uh, especially with the stuff that's like on like 24 seven, things are going to fail. And a lot of the times it's the power supplies that fail. So if I could just keep a, a backup for, you know, those uh, scenarios, well, then that'd be a, uh, ideal. So I received this one. And one thing that I immediately noticed in comparison to the original one is how much lighter it was. And so we can actually, uh, I can actually show it to you. Let's bring this scale here into the shot and we'll just put it right here where it's easy to see. So the original power supply, let's go ahead and weigh that right now. It's set to uh, pounds and ounces. And I'm going to leave this off to the side because technically this is not part of the power supply. So that way it won't be adding like any additional weight to it. So I also threw in the bad capacitors in here, even though, you know, they'd be kind of dry and, you know, lost a bit of weight. But at least it'll give us an idea of what this power supply normally uh, weighs. So according to this, it's about two pounds, 6.2 ounces or one kilogram, 850 or is that no one kilogram, 85 grams. All right, let's uh, move this one off of here. And let's check the new one. <laughs> one pound, 14.2 ounces, or 855 grams, which is not a crazy, crazy difference, but it is noticeable. And I noticed it like immediately. I didn't even have to like compare it. I was like, yeah, this definitely feels lighter. Yeah, so I thought we'd just do like a quick comparison between these two and see how much different the insides of the new ones are compared to the old one. And um, not just that, but there's a couple of differences that we can see here without even opening this thing up. Uh, first of all, the cables coming out of the old power supply for the 24-pin uh, connector, thats uh, they're kind of stubby and short. On the new one, they're actually a little bit longer, which is actually, I kind of like this a little bit just to make it easier to like be able to like put it in there and like pop it out with these short ones here. Uh, since it fits kind of like that, it's a, it was a little bit of a hassle. I actually don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, to be honest, but um, I kind of like the cables to be just a little bit longer, I guess. So that, that was a, that was an okay uh, difference. And also the 12 volt, the SATAs, uh, these cables on the new one, they're also just a little bit longer. I tried to bundle these up here so they were kind of similar. And you can see how like these ones here, like they stick out like just a little bit more than the originals. So, yeah, that's uh, external differences there. The label on the new one. Let's see. I don't know how well it's going to come through here on video, but let's zoom in on that. So this is the labels on the original power supply. The text is nice and crisp, like all this little tiny uh, fonts uh, are there really legible. And as well as like this barcode over here, you can tell, you know, that it's that it's a very detailed print on the new one. The text looks fuzzy, like it's still legible, but it just doesn't appear to have that crispness that the original one does. Also, this barcode right here is not as dense looking as the oh, on the original power supply. And the text on this also looks a little kind of like fuzzy. So I don't know. I'm kind of getting the impression that this is not a genuine Dell power supply, even though like the model number and everything is uh, exactly the same. Let's get a screwdriver and actually take a look at the internals. I paid a total of $26.94 for this thing shipped. Now, on the original one, where we had two screws along the side here, and then there's two on this end. On the new one, there's two right here, which are kind of same 
position as those are. There's one right there, and it does have two on the side here, but there's also another one hiding in underneath that. So I don't know what that's all about just yet. I can't really tell from looking at it from the side either. But let's go ahead and remove just the case screws. I'm going to ignore those two for now, and let's just see what that does and see what's attached to the opposite side. Because, I mean, there's got to be something if there's screws there. And, yeah, we don't we don't need no stinking guarantee. That screw doesn't feel... Oh! <laughs> That's a Torx. Yeah, I'm definitely starting to get the uh, feeling here that this is not a genuine Dell power supply. So, uh, I don't know how easily it's going to be able to tell. But, yeah, that's definitely a Torx. And what about this one? This might be a Torx as well. Actually, I said I wasn't going to remove that one. Let's see if this comes off. All right, let's cut this zip tie over here. And let's see if this case lift. Oh, it does lift off. So what's on the other? There's nothing. Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Wait till you see it. It's a weight. So it's a big chunk of metal there for uh, added weight to this thing. And they glued it in place, presumably so that it doesn't rattle around. Oh, man, that is that's some like massive cheat right there. Jeez, man. Uh, so let's uh, get a comparison here of the thickness of this metal, because I'm pretty sure that that's uh, also kind of drastically different. Well, maybe not drastically, but it's definitely different. So here we go. This is the, let's measure the original. So this, ma uh, this thing is stuck. Why is it stuck? There it goes. So in inches, it measures about 0.032. And that translates to about 0.82 millimeters. On the new one, that is 0.0. Let's see, I don't really have a good grip on this. Here we go. Point oh, about 0 0.6, 0 0.6 millimeters, or trying to keep that as steady as possible there, 0 0.6 millimeters, or 0 0.023 uh, inches. Okay, as uh, far as the internals go, yeah, this new one's definitely looking a bit on the anemic side regarding like the regulation and all that. It only has a single IC over here. And that is, uh, says EST7502. Uh, this one here, the original one, it does have a PFC uh, or power factor correcting uh, circuit because that's what it uses that big coil there for. And that's why it only had a single, like, large capacitor underneath this heatsink. This one here does not have that. So it just uses these two capacitors to uh, store the rectified mains. And so. Yeah, that's a, a that's a difference there regarding the actual electronics. There is an IC underneath there. That's probably going to be a um I can't quite tell what that is. I think it says SR805B. Uh yeah, I just quickly looked. I can't really find any information about that one. But judging by its location, this diode and this little transformer right here, I'm guessing that's going to be part of the like the 5 volt standby voltage so they have it like way over here in the back there is oh yeah this i just realized that there's a component on that board there that's where the power comes in and no clue what that's all about yeah that's kind of weird i mean i don't want to like completely analyze this thing i just wanted to do like a quick comparison of the um, internals and just some of the uh, physical features but yeah, that's uh, what we got. The the two transformers, like the main transformers here, they look to be about the same size. I can't speak for, you know, like the actual current capability of it or anything like that, but they do seem fairly similar. There is a small transformer right there on this one. I think that might be the standby uh, voltage uh, transformer for the original power supply. So that one, it also seems... No, it's actually... It's a little bit bigger than that one, so maybe it's more than just the 5-volt standby. It could also be the uh, used as the actual 5-volt supply as well. And then they just kind of control it over here uh, somewhere. I don't know, you know, exactly how this uh, power supply uh, is all laid out or anything like that. But, yeah, that's what we got. And this transformer on this one, 
I'm going to guess maybe the uh, gate drive for the MOSFETs uh, to switch this transformer. And uh, then we've got a bunch of, these are going to be all diodes right there for rectifying the 12 volt, the 5 volt, and probably the 3.3 as well. So, yeah, that's uh, pretty much about as far as I wanted to go with this thing. It's definitely, you're not getting a Dell with this one right here. <laughs> this is uh, some other uh, thing. And on the board here, it says CTX 420. So, yeah, someone must have been high when they decided to uh, label this one a Dell. So, there we go. Does that answer the question? Is it a fake? I'm pretty sure it's a fake Dell power supply. I mean, obviously, the uh, power supply itself is, is, is physical, and it's here. So, power supply itself is not fake, but it's definitely not a Dell. So, uh, there we go. That was just a, a quick little video that I wanted to uh, do comparing these two. And if you're curious about the uh, previous video that I did on this one, I'll put the little link up here in the little Who's a Watson right here on the corner. So, feel free to click on that if you want to watch it. But... Uh, for now, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys around the bench.